Hi, this is Cindy Cochran. Welcome to the archives of The Cindy Cochran Show. Remember, I'm live Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 11, right here on IRLoneStar.com. You can be a part of the show by calling 936-647-3776. Also, please visit my Facebook page, The Cindy Cochran Show. And let me say a special thanks to our show sponsors, BK Myers Photography. If you would like to be a sponsor of The Cindy Cochran Show, contact me at Cindy at IRLoneStar.com. Enjoy. And, uh, it's just, it's beautiful. So this is a great day for you to get out, do something if you're inside. And if you're in inside already and you are working, oh, I hope you're near a window or something. It's just, it is, it's beautiful. And um, Chris Rossetti, I got to thank you so much for uh, Tuesday calling in with your Santa speak. It was incredible to see that little girl's eyes and she was talking to santa claus so that he called in the radio show to talk to her brianna dunahoe it was so cute so thank you chris from san francisco (laughs) calling us and and saying uh merry christmas to that little girl and asking her what she wants for christmas it was it was great um i wish i had wish i knew you were going to do that i would have taken a picture of her face when she was listening you talked to her so thank you we got great listeners great listeners uh that uh, we have people that will pray for things that are going on. And if you need prayer warriors, we have a great, my Facebook is full of great, great prayer warriors. So if you ever need anything like that, please let us know. Uh, they're good. And uh, with God, they get results. You know, it's, it's very cool. A lot of people right now, prayer is under attack. And here's why. Because after the San Bernardino uh, happening and the shooting and uh, that carnage that happened. A lot of the Republican uh, presidential candidates came out and said that uh, what a tragic thing, our prayers and our thoughts are with you, and, and that uh, ask people to pray for, you know, for the families and, and the, the people that were still, that were wounded and all. So there was a lot of, uh, of ask for prayers. And so the Daily News comes out, and on the front page, it says, God isn't, you know, it's not working. You know, the prayer is not working. And God isn't fixing this. So they got blasted for hiding behind prayer instead of uh, doing something about it, instead of taking action and making the stop, where it's not a normal thing. <clears throat> I heard well, a BBC report Well, there's another day in USA with people on the ground being shot at and all, and it's just, uh, this is what happens in the USA. I just want to slap somebody. I can't believe that uh, they're being so condescending and making it where this happens all the time. Now, I know that, you know, it seems like it does happen all the time. No, it doesn't happen all the time. People are shooting people every day. You know what? Of course, of course, people get shot every day in different ways. But when it's a multiple shooting, they, you know, people go crazy. And and the the news stays on it for, let's see, three to four days they're on this. And they, I mean, it's all they report about is it what happened. Even before they know what happened, they're reporting what happened. And if you watched uh, yesterday. Yeah, but. What? I mean, that's that's because you like watching that stuff. No, you know what? I was using I was going to use you as an example of just a brilliant statement that uh, when the president would say, you know, other countries don't have this problem. We're the one that has yeah, the problem. Do. Well, he says that he says no other country has these kind of things on a normal basis like we do. And Richard said, well, wait a minute. Our country is so much bigger than the other countries that you're touting is not having anything like this uh, go on. And that's but true. But it does go on, though. It it happens. We have, well, and especially let's look at Mexico. Yeah, I bet someone's being kidnapped right now. That's right. I agree with you. I I totally agree with you. And in as long as you keep it in perspective of the size of whatever it is, and and then what, uh, how many shootings are happening. But but in the U.S., we have like the strictest gun laws, and the in California has very strict gun laws. But what happened had nothing to do with whether they had strict gun laws or not, because this guy, Farouk, was, uh, was a U.S. citizen. He did not, you know, had, he wasn't on any no-fly list. He wasn't, he didn't have any baggage with him uh, as far as his Muslim faith or anything like that. He wasn't, you know, radical to anybody's uh, 
his appearance was not radical to anybody. And yet he was able to get any gun he wanted at any time. And so he had plenty of ammunition and plenty of guns, plenty of, you know, things that he put together to make bombs. And so I want to go over, because I have been watching this a lot, but I want to go over and have a list of events. And you tell me, you become the detective. You become the feds that come into this situation and start asking questions. From what we know that if you've watched every single, you know, news outlet, what went on, what would you say if you could become the detective for it? Richard, have you... Did you watch any of it, or did you just read about it? I usually let things like that die down about uh, a week or two later. Before you comment? Before I comment. Cause what a smart guy. Well, the worst thing about it, and a lot of those issues, is like, you know, you have these candidates saying we pray for them, and then you look at a lot of issues that are outside our, our grasp or our control. There's right. really nothing else you can say without looking like a jerk. Mm-hmm. Kind of like the – well, this is going to get really depressing. Uh-oh. So I had a I had a, one of my best friends uh, – I was in the car with him the other day, and we were driving around, and he got a phone call. And one of his friends from college killed himself. And they they haven't been in school, probably haven't seen this guy for quite some time. Right. But they were really good friends in college and high school, so, like, they knew families, knew families, and stuff like that. And he gets back from the funeral, and I asked, I was like, don't you think it's kind of strange that you're in a room with different people connected to this guy – but you you don't talk to this guy. Like you have no idea what he was going through or right. what he was doing ten years ago because it's the last mm-hmm. time you saw him. And I was like, that's kind of strange to me because you had this person next to you who like probably talked to him on the phone before he did it. Right. And I go, but then the worst thing is you don't know what to offer. Oh sure. It's, and that's you don't difficult. know like if you really feel like you should Always really say difficult. anything. Why are you there? Mm-hmm. And the reason I bring that up is similar to like we're in the same earth, but these things are happening in California, which is. Right. I mean, I think the distance from here to California is like uh, Czechoslovakia all the way to the UK or mm-hmm. something like that. Mm-hmm. And and yet, though, the media can pull you in and make you feel like it's happening next door. That's right. And and that's one thing I like, I don't I always feel like a jerk with this. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry that happened. Mm-hmm. And that's all. I mean, that's all I can. That's really all you say. can give. Well, and <laughs> that's it. And, uh, Richard, I'm glad you're being so forthright and transparent. But I, I think that a lot of people just feel helpless, and because they see so much of what's going on, and they feel like I've got to do something about that. I've got to, I've got to make a difference. I, I feel so bad. And uh, and you and you, they put a face on the people who died. They put a face on the killers and all that. So you get to know them more than you know the neighbor next door to you. You have more of an interaction. Uh, I guess, with just their background and all. And so you get to know them. It's like, you know, CNN reported... Well, let me tell you, in 1987, CNN uh, comes on the air, and they haven't been on very long. I can't remember exactly when CNN made their debut. Um, But in, in 87, this little girl falls down the well. And that story was so covered... And CNN was on like 24 hours, so CNN could be there and talk to you about the little girl and about the mother and the father and the marital problems they were having and about this hole that was in the ground in the backyard. Why wasn't it covered up? And and went on and on and on. And then this this uh, one guy who was small enough as the firefighter uh, was able to get down that hole and grab her and bring her back up. And this was after anguish oh my goodness knowing that we were gonna we're watching this little girl die and they put a microphone down there to to listen to her to make sure she was still alive they had built this up and you saw the power of what cable television was going to be able to bring us on a 24-hour basis that you could wake up any time in the morning and and you'd still be hearing what was going on with this little girl so anyway when this this fireman picks the little girl up and they bring her up out of that out of that well and uh the cheers and the crying and you feel like your little girl's been saved it was just amazing and and then that poor firefighter i think eventually committed suicide that he but there was so much you know he was such a hero everywhere he went and all the stuff that the pressure of all that of that uh that came with him saving that little girl and it was just because of his size he was able to get down and he didn't feel like he was a hero he hated it but but the media had put so much emphasis on that, and he became a different person than he was, and the whole family and what went on with them. So I'm, I'm telling you, it's just the power that 
the media has. And, you know, and, and our core of listeners, if they listen to me talk about one thing every day, they would know exactly what, you know, they would feel a part of, of a family, feel a part of, of what I was going through, what was, you know, you're going through. There is just, you know, when you're talking to someone and you you uh, build a bond with them and you listen to them, and you know you do that with a lot of anchors that are on TV, uh, you know, the, the guys that the doctor, what's his face? I, he's not a... I'm not a fan of his, but he, every, all women loved when he, Dr. Oz came out, they loved him. And, um, he's still very popular and women just, everything he said, they believed everything he said and, and want to be, uh, a part of that show. And you feel like when you watch something all day long, that's what happens. So this, this, the incident that happened yesterday that went on, it was just, I remember the first, you know, they, they, came, I was watching Fox and it came on and no one knew anything and Shepard Smith is going I don't know what happened we don't know how many people we don't know how many people were killed we don't know how many people he says we don't know anything no one's telling us anything all we know is and then they put up maps and they just then they start speculating and then they start bringing on people that were former whatever and they start saying, well, what I would be doing right now if I was back on the force, and you know, and they start talking about that. And you go like, tell, I just want to know what's going on right now. And so watching that chaos turn into them being able to capture these, you know, not capture them, but to have a shootout with them and, and uh, stop them was, was amazing. Because the way it started out and how chaotic it was, it look like nothing nothing would bring that together but we're going to go through the events we're going to list the events just go through them and then you surmise what you feel like it would be i think i think all of us would come up with probably with the same conclusion but let's see um when i get right back from this break you're listening to the sydney cochran show thank you so much for listening stay with us we'll be right back The Cindy Cochran Show. Even if these walls could talk, they couldn't get a word in edgewise. Doing business since 1985, Assistance League of Montgomery County is a nonprofit, all volunteer organization where all proceeds stay in Montgomery County. We are proud to sponsor 10 philanthropic programs that enhance the lives of those in our community. Visit our thrift shop at 126 North San Jacinto Street in downtown Conroe or call us at 936-760-1151. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. Hello, I'm Bonita DeRosa, Animal Control Officer for the City of Willis. We invite you to tune in to Lone Star Internet Radio every first and third Thursday of the month at 11 a.m. for the Willis Hour. On the first Thursday of the month, the Willis Hour will be covering upcoming events and news about the city. Join in the conversation with your city officials and other leaders in the community. On the third, we will be doing a recap of the last city council meeting. The mission of the city of Willis is to provide high quality services, accountability, and professional commitment to our citizens. We pledge to provide those who live, work, and visit our city an effective government that is open and responsive to the needs and values of the community. Again, we invite you to tune in on Lone Star Internet Radio every first and third Thursday of the month at 11 for the Willis Hour. In a world where everyone with a smartphone is a photographer, unique images still stand out in local newspapers, magazines, and on the Internet. Writer and photographer Brad Meyer has gained a reputation for innovation and quality, specializing in an editorial approach to portraits and event photography. For information, visit bkmeyer.com or call 281-221-4812. Hi, this is BJ Orner from Montgomery County Performing Arts Society. I'm here to remind you to get your tickets now for all the upcoming events that McPass has to offer. All shows will be held at the beautiful Crichton Theater in downtown Conroe. Call 936-441- 7469 for your tickets today or go to our website www.macpass.org 
for more information. Hope to see you at the show. The Cindy Cochran Show. Real Reality Radio. And we're back on the Cindy Cochran Show. Richard just asked me, now, how are you going to talk about this when it isn't done yet? Well, I'm talking about what we do. No, I get it. It's DredgeReport.com. Sure. I get Shut it. Up. Same no. type of reporting. Uh, I'm sorry. I didn't stay up with Drudge I, and I bet Judge. you would take a contract in a second from, like, Fox News if they wanted you to be a reporter. <gasps> wow. Yes, I can see you doing would. that. You'd be like, heck, yeah, just, I'll just read a teleprompter. Whatever you tell me to read, I will, <laughs> I will do it. Now, you know me better than that. I could never remember people's names or anything. No, but... Um, and it's my own opinion. My perception is my well, that's reality. What, that's so why that's this is the Cindy Cochran that's show. That's exactly right. And then I, if I was on Fox, I couldldn't be the Cindy Cochran show. It would be, have to be somebody else's show. Um, but no, we're that g- would be in the contract. When when you're on, mm-hmm. that, that little logo at the bottom left of your TV will have right. a stamp over it with your face. There you go. Well, they would do that. That would be fine. It, if, has, it has to be if, stamped over. If my face could be in the O of the fox, it would be It'd be No, great. no, over it. It has to be completely, completely covering, covered. Completely covered up? Like, okay. For this hour, I it's like me. that. I like that, Richard. You know me so well. It's okay, but I want to give everybody what just an overview of what we know right now, and how would you surmise this? And as opposed to how the politicians have come out and things that they have said, and you go like, "What?" So, all right, this is my perception of what happened. Okay, in San Bernardino, California, there was a shooting at an office party where a devout Muslim. And um, he's a U.S. citizen, Farouk, worked for five years. He worked there for five years. And he was at the party. He left angry. No one has said why he was angry. But here's what doesn't make sense. It's just like... Someone, Susie took the last piece of cake. Well, or they, you know, they call him, are you getting a little fat, Farouk, or something like that. So he got mad. He goes home and tells his wife, get the flap jacket on, get the guns, get the, the bombs and the things that we put together, and let's go back, and we're going to show them. It's like Office Space, the sequel. <laughs> yeah, on steroids. But, but no, he, he leaves the party. He goes home, and he gets his wife, whose last name is Malik, Tashafim or something like that is her first name. I can't pronounce it. Malik. After they drop off, now they have a six-month-old daughter. He comes home. He says, okay, this is it. I think this is what, I, you know, I can't take them anymore. Uh, let The promotion's not mine. Let's get to the party. Like, you know, this was a, a last-minute thing. No, it had to be kind of planned because they drop off the six-month-old daughter at the grandma's and say they're going to a doctor's appointment. And then they get back in their black SUV and they put on their gear that look like, you know, like terrorist gear outfits and they put a mask on. Now, what, the mask is interesting. Wasn't there three people? No, it was two. Okay. They, they, they thought there was a, a, a driver and all that and they were looking for the third person and they may end up you, finding can, a third person. Can but, you imagine that like realization if someone brings up to the police commissioner is like, maybe there wasn't a third person. And they're all kind of like, yeah. they all look around, you know, and they're kind of like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> it yeah. was only these two people. Now, the, now, they they then put a mask on. Now, this is interesting. If it was something they were just mad about and he wants to to show them that he's come back and he's taking revenge, that they wouldn't be wearing masks. They wouldn't be trying to hide who they were. So they, they walk in. And with these, the rifles in tow and all of this, they walk up to the second floor of this conference room. So there are plenty of people they could have shot and done away with, but they didn't. They walked up to the second floor, back to the party, and go ahead, and they commenced to killing 14 people, wounding 17 of his fellow workers, who just recently said, hey, Farouk, we're going to do a baby shower for you and your wife. Uh, for the new for the new baby and so when's a good time for you and they were discussing that wow okay so anyway he goes back into this party of his fellow workers and uh and then shoots everybody i'm thinking this is a cover-up job there was something really going on in that building that no one wanted anyone to know about it it and so it's covering up this is distraction no you this are, is totally mission impossible no you've watched too many movies now <laughs> listen he goes back to his apart to their apartment and by this time the police have, have come on the scene 
and everybody's in there and and they're asking the people who have survived you know what do they think happened and they said they don't know but they they figure out it's Farouk it's Farouk and his wife Malik who came back to the party and shot everybody up and they tell him where he lives they go to the the apartment and as they're trying to do get their uh, uh make their getaway then they they chase them down and they have the shootout and they kill both um, Malik and Farouk and uh, by the way, though, here's the thing that has come out. Farouk had flown to Saudi Arabia. He stayed there a while. He comes back with his wife, new wife, Tashavim, anyway, Malik. And now they're, mar- uh, they're married. They've been in Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia. And what did Cindy Cochran say about anybody that wants to fly to Saudi Arabia? Saudi, Saudi Arabia. I can't even pronounce it. Anyway, if you want to fly there, you got one way ticket. You don't come back once you fly there, and get radicalized. You know why they went there, no. right? Oh, why he went there? He went to get his wife, and so why else do you think he went there? Well, people go to Saudi Arabia for Mecca. It's like a real, they have to go. They got to yeah. go there one time in their lifetime. It's it's asked upon the people who. Are... No, this was not. This was not the reason why he went. He had been talking to this girl. And uh, he goes well, I'm just over saying there. Your, your reasoning here, one way ticket, that's just not going to work out. No, I'm saying people want to go visit their religious ground. No, thing. I'm sorry. They have to. They have to just give <laughs> because every time we hear these stories, they go. They recently went to Saudi Arabia, and were radicalized, and they came back, and then and seeing there's he's a citizen. I, I'm just it's saying perfect. your statement is kind of mean. Is it mean? It's being mean to no, the no, no, people no. who just want to go there to visit for religious purposes. No, no, no. Well, Not this guy. This guy, probably total suspect. This this but, guy? No, but he wasn't a suspect. He wasn't on any no-fly list or anything like that. He he went there, and he marries this girl, and apparently is become rad- radicalized, comes back here, and then... Uh, He's married for a couple of years, and all of a sudden, this ha- you know this happens. Now, was he triggered by ISIS? Did he, was he triggered by Al Qaeda or well, we better the we others? better interrogate this child? Yes, if we could just question the child, I don't know. But um, and Grandma is sitting there waiting for them to come back to pick up the kid. She's watching CNN. She's watching whatever MSNBC, uh, and uh, all of a sudden, there there it is. There's you know Farouk. Where what have you done? And the SWAT teams, and, and I, th- I was kind of impressed with how fast they were able to coordinate the chaos and get through that and make sure they got these guys. Now, now most what's interesting about this, and it's different, is that these guys didn't move a mile away from their, their uh, apartment or a couple of miles from where that thing happened. Normally, you get in your car and you try and drive as fast as you can and get as far, as far away as you can. But they came back... And here's an interesting part you'll love. They were wearing GoPros. The husband and wife was were wearing GoPros. So they think they were tra- trying to upload the video that they had been shot with uh, with uh, wearing the GoPros and them killing everybody. And they wanted to send it back to, you know, ISIS and, and those guys. They didn't think they were going to be keeping it for, you know, a party they were having later. But I don't know. Any, anyway, it's so that home movie thing. Yeah, and just imagine everybody sit down. Well, that's six have, month old. We're going to have a. We're going to have our <laughs> home movies. Everybody sit down. Don't be afraid. But uh, it was. It, it, so they're trying to find out that, and that hasn't been come out yet. But uh, the GoPros were an interesting uh, accessory that I uh, know no one has seen before. Uh, they've got so many different angles of people taking video of things that went on around it. And it's interesting to watch the videos. We've got to have some lessons. If if we're going to do something about this and we, you know, if the police, it's difficult to get them to wear, you know, the body gear for the showing what's going on. But teach people how to take videos. You're needed, Richard. You're needed to, to help those people while there's a crisis going on. How do you videotape this so that we can use this later on, you know, on our newscasts? Because they, the news were taking everything they could get. And they were just showing these, uh, you know, it's all over the place. Uh, it's, you know, it's like it's out of focus. It's too fast. They're I think if I had the fast. money like a Bruce Wayne or something like that, yeah. I would do a misinformation company. <laughs> and I would just I, – just to see if you could slip through the news. Like, you know, to take some – Take a video of like a rave or something, mm-hmm. going, like just chaos, mm-hmm. yeah. and then submit it to them. I was like, here's the shooting. 
Yeah. And see if it, <laughs> see if it gets what, through. I'm telling you, some of the stuff that they have been playing uh, has been amazing. Now, with with that said, with with those facts that we know for sure in that, do you believe that this was just um, an office rage, you know, I'm going to get you guys, get back at you guys for what you said to me? Do you feel it's I, that? I, I feel it leans more towards that than... A, than, ter- than, than a terrorist attack. How can you? Okay, uh, mainly Did you beca- not listen. Man- I said mainly because it's where he worked. I know, but he goes home after this party. He's at the party. He's well, at I know, the but office I'm saying, party. Like, it's it's more because that's too personal. But that's not just random random acts of violence because they want to prove a point. That's right. But they, but ISIS has told them that go ahead and do your own thing wherever you are and how much chaos and how much terror did this strike in the heart of that area at san bernardino and now it's all over the world that this has happened i mean going postal is a term today that's but we don't use that anymore i I remember going postal i remember that and then that i mean that's a term you can find online like it's probably in the dictionary going postal that's right so. And the post office people would go in there and just and shoot up people, and that's been happening like forever. I understand that. It's not. This isn't a well. No, it's all smiles since thing. Amazon's purchasing them. It's all yeah. smiles. Oh, that because <laughs> they're getting replaced by drones. <laughs> that's true. Very good. That's, that's so. No one's going. Right. Those drones are going to go postal. Yeah, but well, uh, you don't know. You don't know. Somebody no, get a hold I, of no, them. This and whole scenario, it. Cindy, it's you can twist it any way you want, and that's why the media loves it because they can literally change their their demeanor on it in a second and it's just kind of like oh we were wrong there's actually solid no, proof that Richard. he wrote a letter saying i hate everybody i hate and my wife thinks the same way i'm so lucky to find her richard <laughs> and, richard you go home because you get mad at somebody at the office party and your wife and you don your flap jackets flap jacks flap jackets and uh all your terrorist gear and come back to prove a point i don't think so i think this is uh they said if you find a gathering enough people go there kill people this is what we're doing we were trying to strike fear i think that's what it was how could it be anything different but you drop off the baby i was glad they dropped the baby off that was that was good so i'm i'm proud uh for them for having at least that much conscious and that poor baby growing up and so what are your mother and daddy what they do so I feel bad for them, but the, but anyway, that's that to me says something happened. It's a little different, a little different mo from other terrorists. But uh, this is a a man and his wife that did this. Very strange. Anyway, when we get back from this break, we're going to talk about now how our president responded, how a future presidents that want to be presidents in the Democratic Party uh, responded, and and the mockery of prayer. Okay, we're going to be right back. Don't go away. So much to talk about. And if you want to talk about it, you know the number to call, 936-647-3776. The Cindy Cochran Show. We'll be right back. Conroe now has another first. The Cindy Cochran Show. Mornings at 10 a.m. on IRLoneStar.com. Are you interested in learning more about preparing quick, healthy, and safe meals for your family? Would you like to spend time with others learning tips and tricks, along with practicing and tasting nutritious food? If so, the On the Road to Healthy Living Mobile Cooking School is for you. Call Amy Ressler at Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service at 936-539-7825 to find a class near you or volunteer to host a class. Howdy, howdy, folks. Cable Smith, host of the Lone Star Outdoor Show, inviting you to join me Saturday mornings from 7 to 8 on Lone Star Internet Radio for Texas premier hunting, fishing, and outdoor talk show. So pour yourself another cup of coffee and pull up that stool a little closer to the old campfire because if you can catch it or kill it in Texas, we're going to talk about it. That's right. Bucks and ducks, gobblers, monster bass, redfish, trout, and a whole lot more. Plus, you never know what outdoor celebrity is going to drop by from Phil, the duck commander Robertson, to fishing legend Bill Dance, or everybody's favorite uncle Ted Nugent. Heck, we might even mix in an interview and hear some brand spanking new Texas music from one of your favorite Texas musicians like Robert Earl Keane, Brandon Ryder, or the honky-tonk kid himself, Aaron Watson. 
Loved or hated but never ignored, it's the Lone Star Outdoors Show with me, Cable Smith, Saturday mornings from 7 to 8 right here on Lone Star Internet Radio on IRLoneStar.com. Doing business since 1985, Assistance League of Montgomery County is a nonprofit, all volunteer organization where all proceeds stay in Montgomery County. Through our Operation School Bell program, we have provided new clothes to over 50,000 students in our county. Visit our thrift shop at 126 North San Jacinto Street in downtown Conroe or call us at 936 936- 760 1151. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. In a world where everyone with a smartphone is a photographer, unique images still stand out in local newspapers, magazines, and on the internet. Writer and photographer Brad Meyer has gained a reputation for innovation and quality, specializing in an editorial approach to portraits and event photographer. For information, visit bkmeyer.com or call 281-221-4812. The Cindy Cochran Show, the first daily talk show serving Montgomery County. And we're back on the Cindy Cochran Show. I'm so happy to have you listening in and uh, and hopefully you join in because because this is just my opinion. I understand it's just my opinion, um, and that uh, just like you have an opinion from what you've heard, what you've seen, and then if you want to share that, please share that. I l- I love that. I may be opinionated, but I l- like to listen to other people's opinion, whether it's right or wrong, or whether I agree with it. It doesn't matter. It's just to, to converse, to talk about it, to communicate about it. And because so, you're definitely going to take their opinion. And think and, about your own opinion, applying what they say. And digest it and then see. Definitely. Uh, I can totally I could, see you doing that. How it could possibly work in with mine um, and how I could take credit for it. No, I mean uh, how we could uh, make this work together. But I have to say, and it's not because I'm not ra- ranting and ranting on about Obama because he's a Democrat or anything like that. But it just seems there's a pattern here. It seems like the Obama speechwriters, all they have to do is scratch out the name of uh, Colorado now and insert San Bernardino and just leave the rest of the text in his speech alone because it's the same thing over and over. He hides behind gun control. He thinks if he says, we need more gun control and all these things will stop happening, that that makes him look like he is uh, on top of things. He's got it. He's got it handled and all. But instead of, you know, let's regurgitate some of the places that have these strict gun control laws that you want and they're in place and these are being governed by Democrats who agree with the law, make the law happen there, and it does not change the amount of killings and violence and all that that happen. And you feel it's all the guns that are out there that do this, that they can get whenever they want to. The bad guys can get it. What if that gun-free zone in San Bernardino had someone who who concealed, carried a, a gun, and that when the guy and his wife come in and start shooting, they could have uh, neutralized that? What if that would have happened? I, I don't get why he thinks that that we just more laws more laws more strict laws let's let's get these people uh let's get these guns off the street get them out of their hands let's do a volunteer thing everybody bring your guns in and it'll make us much more safer if you'll just bring your guns in yeah so farouk and malik his wife malik that's what they would have done. They would have said, you know what? I think we ought to bring our stuff in. Yeah, that's what's going to happen. No, so the people who sat around at the office party drinking and having a good time and feeling like, uh, no, this is a gun-free zone. And when people saw that gun-free zone, they would drop their guns out of their pockets and leave them right there in a pile and pick them up when they come out. I, I just I don't get the, you know, how people think about this and how they they rationalize that it's that's going to make everything happen and now hillary clinton has jumped on this and she's got her gun control law voice on this 
So you'll hear it today. You'll hear, if you watch the news, you'll hear them replay her screaming about, I'm not going to let this happen anymore. These people are going to stop carrying guns and we're going to stop giving the guns out to people who don't deserve them. I don't know. It's just, it's just strange to me. God bless the people who want to do better and say, I, I don't want people having guns and I want people to be peaceful. I want everybody to be at peace. That's just wonderful. And God would love that. God would love everybody to obey his laws. And he's already had all that stuff. He says, don't kill people and, uh, and do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. All those laws have been there forever. And it didn't matter. People picked up rocks and killed people. People will get knives and kill people. They'll get cars and run over people. And they will, you know, and, and they'll use knives. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. There's, you're going to find some way to stop the other person that you don't like or that's coming after you. And I, I don't understand why we don't make it where people are armed, but they're, you know, they're taught. They, they, it's easy to, to go to and find these lessons that you can learn to, uh, how to use, use a gun and when to use a gun. It's just like when people take karate and those kind of things. And they teach them that this is not a weapon for you to use unless you need to defend yourself. And that you just don't go out. And I, I can imagine if I, and it would be difficult for me if I, I think if I had a black belt, I, I would be hoping somebody would want to pick on me so I could show off that. But but you you're taught do not feel that way. You don't feel that way about it. You feel that it just it it emboldens you to feel like if somebody tries something, I feel like I could take care of myself. But if you're a concealed gun carrier and you're in a store and you're in a group of people that you feel like I'm not as afraid as the person who has no nothing to arm themselves with if somebody came in and started doing something. And you can't depend on the policeman to be there at all times. We know that. We know that. But they did a great job. I have to give them credit for the great job they did in controlling the chaos and getting uh, getting the people out of the buildings and making sure that there was nobody left in there that was going to be shooting anybody. And uh, the bomb squad, wow, they showed off some stuff that I didn't know a bear cat, it's a, I think it's a bear cat or something like that, the the vehicle that they went up to the SUV with and and pinned in the SUV and, and disabled it and make sure there was nobody or no other bombs or anything like that in there. And the robotic, you know, brave heroes that go in there and make sure that there's nothing else left in there to, uh, you know, to hurt anybody with this coming in to try and, you know, go over the crime scene. So... It was it was interesting. You find out a lot of you know a lot about what people are worth and what they're doing. But I just I don't know. I think the Democrats got to be careful about not just desensitizing people totally to their rant about more gun control and more laws that will help make this go away. And then when you start finding out this guy was a U.S. citizen, he had none of these uh, characteristics that would raise a red flag. So we've got to make sure that the people that they go after that are innocent have some way to uh, defend themselves. So I don't know. It's, it's, it's absolutely crazy. And, and I think what we go back to is we feel helpless a lot of times. Yes, we do. And we pray. And we pray for people. And we pray for comfort and for peace and for our own minds not to be so absolutely wild about it and I know that Richard has some thoughts on this because he's been looking up all of the things the crisis things that have happened in the United States from people that were U.S. citizens and like for example Richard who are you thinking well I'm surprised you didn't talk about the Planned Parenthood shooting oh you know this came up and it kind of overshadowed that but that was terrible. That's horrible that somebody would would shoot people. I mean, he's just as bad as a terrorist as anyone else. And I believe that they shouldn't be performing abortions or selling body parts and all that. And I would, pro, you know, protest that if I stood out there and would protest that because that's my right. And that I can talk uh, against it and try and educate, you know, women about the, you know, ramifications of doing all that. But I wouldn't shoot anybody. I wouldn't do that. So I, I, I'm totally against Richard. So you know, totally against what that guy did. And he needs to be, you know, 
charged to every letter of the law that they can. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. No, I'm just saying. I mean, there's there's a lot of connections <laughs> to both of them between the two, and then you think so? Yeah. I mean, well, this guy planned an attack mm-hmm. in an area, right? That's that's similar to me. Well, and and that just he, because he's not as lo- uh, a person of religion. Well, he is. He probably is, believes that that uh, killing babies is wrong. Killing babies is wrong, and he needs he wants to stop it. So he goes in and tries to stop the you know the people that are working there or the doctors or or whatever that that's that was his call so he he felt that was his call now this guy lived in a place with no electricity no water and all that and he's a, a recluse well, and he, sometimes he, that makes people kind of go batty well yeah i mean i think the, these stories or these events that happen the scariest thing to me is is always the long term and how things end up because what's going to end up with that man Robert Deere. What's going to happen? I'm interested in that. I'm interested in like when they're going to put a period to this guy. Yeah. Because and the same thing with the the this terrorist deal. There's no there's no way to put a period on something like this. There's no way. It's almost like the only way to look at it is there's a form of control. Mm-hmm. You got to control it somehow. Uh, and what happens in these scenarios, especially in a country as big as the United States, is fear starts being the form of control. And the only thing I can really see, like long term, is like you know you got these uh, officials talking about gun control, you got to talk about border control, uh, mm-hmm. like the no fly lists. I mean, and what's crazy, a lot of people don't realize is that we have a constitution, and I, I would say I'm a very I'm a constitutional foot soldier, I guess in a sense, if you want to describe me. Like I really believe that document has a lot of things to say about how we should treat one another in this country, and this right. and the fear going down the road especially with this no fly list that people are proposing i mean like due process is thrown out the window and everyone being treated equally especially if they're american citizen like who i don't give a hoot if this man went to saudi arabia he's going to be treated the same as any other criminal in -hmm. this country and Mm -hmm. we're gonna have due process this guy okay but do you think do you really think that the forefathers wanted us to be idiots about the thing that we didn't use our common sense in in areas well, i don't that... i don't think we should violate our liberties well, just I, just so i so we feel they more... have been though they have been in the sense that because of these things have happened look at how many things now that we have to processes we have to go through as innocent well that's because people. like i said like people are afraid and control is the only way they know how to put a period to it but you can't put a period to this kind of stuff People are creative. People are extremists in this situation, and it's mm-hmm. going to happen no matter what. You mentioned earlier weapons of choice. doesn't matter. They want to hurt somebody. That's right. And to that's me, right. th- there's not really a solution. And right now that's the scariest thing I see happening is the form of control people are going to have, especially when they talk about gun control. Mm-hmm. I mean that, that to me is – that brings a whole another thing to that because that means someone else can be in control. So that means someone's going to have the guns. Someone someone's going to have to have the guns, right? That's and right. we're not going to put them in one big fire. And there's, there's no more guns in this world. Which to me, that's the way we should be thinking: is let's just get rid of any type of deal. But then again, what happens if aliens attack? We don't have any guns. That's right. But, uh, <laughs> but no, it's more like threats. No. I it's it's a scary world, but also it's a, I think it's a fantastic world because a lot of people forget that this is the safest we've ever been uh, on a medical side of life, on a home front side of life. Uh, neighbor side of life. I mm-hmm. mean, it's just kind of, it's crazy to me that we're still worried about these things, and I feel like we should be worried about other things, especially locally. Well, I, and I agree with you, and also putting everything in perspective. It's like whenever you're in the middle of the news, this news cycle, and they're just, it's just inundated with this. You're saturated with it and all, and they're showing all these things that are going on, and all of a sudden, the the a view of what we have pulls way out, pulls way out away where that is, and it's this little tiny area that this is happening in. But we feel like it's all well, around us. Well, it, it, it's funny is you talk. I'm sorry, let me start it no, all that's over. Okay. One thing I always love is, is imagine being the president of the United States, and you're being asked at least five thousand questions a day mm-hmm. if if it was allowed. Right. They want your input on everything Mm -hmm. and you can kind of translate that to a world power every world power feels like they need to respond to everything that happens in this world right and i don't know when that came about Mm -hmm. maybe the after the devastation of world war ii because europe was just completely obliterated due to them fighting each other 
Uh, same thing with the atrocities that happened over in Asia and Russia. But I, somewhere down the line, like, we really cared about what other people thought. Well, that and the media had a lot to do with that because the first time we could start seeing the faces of what people yeah. talk about, it was just numbers. But then it it's just, almost like we got to a point and we didn't know. We were almost like children and inexperienced and we didn't know how to handle it. So mm-hmm. we we were doing the best we can. But right now it's just – I'm like, I mean, why does it matter? That's one thing I'm trying to – I wonder what's going to happen. I wouldn't mind hearing a, a candidate elected saying like – what. Not, not not saying like this doesn't matter. It's more of like what's more important to you, what's locally or mm-hmm. what's happening over there. Right. And if we're not taking. I'm not see, saying this is what the refugee thing is, has been a big. Well, Texas part about is already it. suing the federal government over I those know, six I people. Saw that. And I so saw my that. question to those folks is why why are you wasting our tax dollars doing this? Because it's not it's it, it's written down in in law mm-hmm. that we pass that it's legal for them to be a refugee here. Well, to ask for ask asylum. Ask for asylum. It's legal for them. So what's going to happen is the state of Texas, you and I are, are going to pay mm-hmm. X amount of dollars just to make a statement. We're paying money just to make a statement. Right. And and Richard, I, I think that – I think that's – for six people. <laughs> for six people. For, I mean I – But I, it was a representative of, of the deal that the federal government is going to tell us we have to take these many thousands of – You don't think there's a better refugee. way to go about this? Of course, of course there is, and not, and I I think that people are they're trying to run from you know from war and all that. But here we and have like another one too is Planned Parenthood. We're taking money away from. Well, they're suing states and they're winning a hundred percent. So that's costing us money mm-hmm. because we have some weirdos here that like don't believe in what Planned Parenthood's doing. But there's no way they're going to win, and like they're it's just a fight that's you're costing people money that's what it is costing your citizens money just because you don't believe in something right so you don't think that you're you feel like i'm paying for something and how much money you get from me already and i'm having to pay for something that i it goes directly against what i believe is is right and wrong no i'm talking about the express that i'm talking about the members of of elected officials who are choosing battles that you can't win their strategy no. isn't a smart strategy Right, and it's costing the entire state. Right, right. No, I, I, picking your battles. I understand what you're saying about picking your battles, but, but the refugee problem to me is like just like you're saying. Should we take care of our veterans first? Should we take care of the people that are hurting? Well, it's right not now? like there's one pot of money and you sit there and like let's make a trickle down list, numerical order, who gets it first. Well, it, it's, and so whatever we, if the, you know, I don't. That's not how it works. But it's sad. It's really sad though that uh, the attention that we're giving, you know, this group of people over here, and we're not taking care of our own. That are suffering well, because of I think that's, what we're that's not, the job of the media them. to ask those kind of questions. I mean, it, especially well, when it are. comes down to the moderators of, of a debate. That's why mm-hmm. I love debates because you hope the moderators fair. Yeah, like asking those kind of questions because right. I mean it, it is like to me what affects me and I'm going to be a selfish man about it. But it's anything that's local. So sure. if if these refugees were affecting me locally, then I might might be verbal about it. But I have no idea how's it affecting me. Like I don't see any instant impact in long term. People are just afraid that some one of them out of the ten thousand is going to be a, a radical. But I mean, like you know, there's already radicals here, so right. Um, I, but I think it's it, at one point though. At one point, we got to say we've got a trend here going, and we have we have these same things going on. Well, it's just you've got to well, recognize it comes the down trend, to the core right? core of your soul. Almost, if you're a religious person, and especially if you're a Christian, you think they would have open doors for anybody. Right, and I guess what it comes down to, and that's that's if your belief. But me, I I think everyone deserves a chance. Right, and if they don't have any papers, then that's when you're kind of like, well, I guess we're just gonna have to just sit them down somewhere and mm-hmm. figure it out what we're gonna do. And so our immediate reaction is, let's sue the federal government. That's what they wanted to do. <laughs> and I mean, that's just so crazy to me. It's like these are living people who are like, well, no, we're, we'll take care of this. We'll just sue them. Well, and, it uh, amazes me because I don't. I, it, it amazes me that I don't understand. Oh, we have got five minutes. Uh, that I don't understand. We got a why voice. We got a community voice right here. Uh oh! Right off the street, we got a community voice. Okay, what have I said wrong? I know it's coming. I can just see it on the look on your face. It's we should not we, the 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 uh, looking at who do we kill. You know, it's, who do we abort? 
who, who, what wars do we? Uh, you got to introduce support. yourself. It's who do we You're help to Dennis live? O'Connor. Exactly. Listening to Dennis O'Connor who, right now. Who do we help live? It's a, it's a positive thing. It's it's just the um, allow the 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 people who who want to have babies to have babies and support them. Right. And support life. Support right. life. Don't support death. Don't That's right. don't focus on death. Be it war. Uh, or abortion, or all the, the 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 worst things that we humans do, you know. Focus on bringing life to the world. Focus on love. Focus on love. You know that's exactly what God said to do. He said, "You focus on the good things, the positive things." And you will be able to have a peace that passes all understanding. He's right. He's right. And and we we need to do that. We need to be aware of what's going on, but we need to take the attitude of, of you're exactly right, Dennis O'Connor. You're exactly right. You need to have the focus on the positive and the good things and know that those that that energy you send out or how whatever you call it and, and all is going to make a difference. And that's why when you call on prayer and, and you do the prayer, it puts you in a position of, I'm praying for these people, so I, I got to do it in a good way, not in a bad way. I'm not praying that all Muslims go to hell or anything like that or they, that they uh, be wiped from the earth. No, I'm praying that everybody think about what's best for the, of the other human being, you know, and if you do unto him as you want him to do <laughs> done to you, it would be a simple, simple task to do, but we we're not. A lot of people don't get wired that way as they come out of the womb. They they come out and they, in their environment and all, creates a lot of hate and all that. And you just you don't understand how that person could walk in some place and obliterate all those people. I don't understand it. I can't wrap my brain around that. How I do you do no that? No idea. Because. Wouldn't it have been happier to take your six month old daughter to the park yeah, that day? Whatever. It's just not- <laughs> It's not on my universe. No, no. But it, it is It is interesting for us to be aware that that's going on. But people like Dennis O'Connor, who's a beautiful human being, you are a beautiful human being. And uh, and you're right to think about love. Now, he gave me a sign that made me, <laughs> just then, that makes me feel so much better about myself. Dennis, thanks for coming in and, and, and talking to us. And you're right. You brought the positive side of it. Dennis O'Connor, thank you very much. You're listening to Cindy Cochran Show. We're going to be back tomorrow, and we're going to be talking about, uh, I've got it right here. Lenore Purvis is going to be here with Heaven's Army, and we're going to talk about giving and caring and doing things that will help people. And that's what we want to focus on, just like Dennis O'Connor said. You listen to the Cindy Cochran Show. Be with us tomorrow, and remember, God loves you. God's got this, and make somebody happy. You'll be happier. Bye-bye. The Cindy Cochran Show, the first daily talk show serving Montgomery County. Thank you for listening. Hope you enjoyed the show. Any comments, suggestions of topics, email me at the Cindy Cochran Show at gmail.com. Also, check out my Facebook page, The Cindy Cochran Show. Join me live Monday through Friday. See ya.